after defense attorneys rested their case in R. Kelly's federal trial in Chicago on last Friday, after a third day of testimony from the singer's co-defendant and business manager, Daryl McDavid, who prosecutors suggested had significant financial interest in protecting Kelly's reputation amid sexual abuse claims in the late 1990s and early 2000s. Jurors began deliberating Tuesday at R. Kelly's federal trial in Chicago, sorting through a month of evidence and arguments on charges accusing the singer of producing child pornography, enticing minors for sex, and rigging his 2008 child porn trial. Kelly's attorney Jennifer Bonjean, who was standing at a podium a few feet in front of jurors, angrily told jurors in her closing earlier Tuesday that key government witnesses were admitted liars who testified with immunity to ensure they couldn't be charged. At times sounding indignant and raising her voice, Bonjean likened their testimony and other evidence to a cockroach and the government's case to a bowl of soup. If a cockroach falls into soup, she said, you don't just pull out the cockroach and eat the rest of the soup. You throw out the whole soup, said told jurors. She said of the prosecution's case, there are just too many cockroaches. As Bon Jean spoke, Kelly, wearing a gray suit and black mask, looked calm at a nearby defense table. As a prosecutor spoke later and repeatedly looked toward Kelly, he often averted his eyes. Later, when the prosecutor described him abusing minors, he shook his head. Keep watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel to be in touch for more future videos. In her closing rebuttal, prosecutor Jean Nice Penting cited testimony that Kelly's inner circle increasingly focused on doing what Kelly wanted as his fame boomed in the mid-1990s. And ladies and gentlemen, what her Kelly wanted was to have sex with young girls, she said. Jurors withdrew to start deliberating early Tuesday afternoon, heading home without reaching a verdict several hours later. Expected Verdict A federal jury on Wednesday convicted R. Kelly of several child pornography and sex abuse charges in his hometown of Chicago, delivering another legal blow to a singer who used to be one of the biggest R&B stars in the world. Kelly, the 55 years old R&B singer, was found guilty on three counts of child pornography and three counts of child enticement. But the jury acquitted him on a fourth pornography count, as well as a conspiracy to obstruct justice charge accusing him of fixing his state child pornography trial in 2008. He was found not guilty on all three counts of conspiring to receive child pornography and for two further enticement charges. Kelly faced 13 counts. A conviction of just one count of child pornography carries a mandatory minimum sentence of 10 years, while receipt of child pornography carries a mandatory minimum of 5 years. Judges can order that defendants sentenced earlier in separate cases serve their new sentence simultaneously with or only after the first term is fully served. Federal inmates must serve at least 85% of their sentences. Kelly was found guilty on three counts of child pornography and three counts of child enticement, so, if they had to find Kelly both enticed or coerced minors, then Kelly may be sentenced for minimum 45 years in prison, with a total sentence 75 years. Jurors on Wednesday wrote several questions to the judge, at least one indicating the panelists were grappling with some of the case's legal complexities. One asked if they had to find Kelly both enticed and coerced minors, or that he either enticed or coerced them. Over objections from Kelly's lawyer, the judge said they only needed to find one. His two co-defendants were found not guilty on all charges. The verdict comes months after a federal judge in New York sentenced Kelly to 30 years in prison in June for racketeering and sex trafficking. Based on that sentence, the 55-year-old won't be eligible for release until he is around 80. Two sexual misconduct trials still await Kelly, one in Minnesota and one in state court in Chicago. At trial, prosecutors sought to paint a picture of Kelly as a master manipulator who used his fame and wealth to reel in star-stuck fans, some of them minors, to sexually abuse then discard them. Robert Sylvester Kelly was desperate to recover child pornographic videos he made and lugged around in a gym bag, witnesses said. 
They said he offered up to $1 million to recover missing videos before his 2008 trial, knowing they would land him in legal peril. For Kelly accusers testified, all referred to by pseudonyms or their first names, Jane, Mia, Pauline, and Tracy. Some cried when describing the abuse, but otherwise spoke calmly and with confidence. A fifth accuser, Brittany, did not testify. Sitting nearby in a suit and face mask, Kelly often averted his eyes and looked down as his accusers spoke. A single video, which state prosecutors said was Kelly abusing a girl of around 14, was the focal point of that trial. On the witness stand for two days at the end of August, Jane paused, tugged at a necklace and dabbed her eyes with a tissue when she said publicly for the first time that the girl in the video was her, aged 14, and that the man was Kelly, who would have been around 30. Jane testified, he was telling me how great of a job I did, I felt successful, I felt happy. Jane testified, Sparkle told me that I should ask Kelly to be my godfather. Jane began to cry during her time on the stand. She testified Kelly began engaging in sex acts with her when she was 14 and had sexual intercourse with her hundreds of times, starting when she was 15 before she turned 18. Thank you for watching. Please share your opinion about this topic. See you soon.